Greetings and salutations, YouTubers and mouth actors. We're back here at Stop Logic Motorsports, and we're taking on the second part of my Boingers slash spring replacement, and I'm still on that. So, if you like the content, like and subscribe. If you don't, feel free to criticize me harshly in the comments, or I also take payment in attaboys. And I'm going to do a summary of what we're going to work on today. So to get at this rear shock that we're going to be taking out, we got to take off the seat, both side panels, top bolt, and I'm going to reposition this thing, top bolt, let's get a good look, top bolt here, and then these two bolts here, I want to yank this fella out, and spin the spring off and put in our new spacers and our new uh, Racetech slash IBAC spring set. I know what some of you are saying, well, why aren't you uh, sending this off to go race? Well, I don't have $1,200, but I did have $300. Oh, I had some PayPal credits, so this actually came out to about $150 for me for both sets of springs. So I'm going to set this thing up, and then hopefully, if weather holds up this Saturday, we're going to take this thing out and abuse it with the new springs and see how it runs. But at any rate... There's going to be parts of this how-to that I skip because I don't really see the uh, point in showing you guys how to remove a seat and side panels. So you guys know how to do that. This disassembly and reassembly is going to focus on the removal and, uh, removal and, I guess, replacement of the rear shock, the springs, and the collars that come with the bike. So, I don't think it's going to go as quick as the front suspension did, which, uh, that was, uh kind of a uh, non-standard way of doing that we're doing the uh, we're doing the rear shock in the standard manner I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheel here but at any rate hopefully you guys look forward to the rest of this video and hopefully it helps somebody out in the meantime have a good one we'll see you in a few alrighty and we're back so let's try and peel this rear shock out so on most bikes I've worked on, I'm used to pulling the entire subframe, airbox, whole shebangity bang bang. And I did a similar job like this on a CRF 250L. I uh, talk about those Crowfoot uh, adapters. Uh, unlike the Yamaha, Honda has bolts on the other side. The Yamaha has these flat sided stoppers, kind of like on axle pinch bolts. Or uh, axle bolts. So, uh, you know, I'm still kind of in awe of uh, Yamaha's forward thinking and thoughtful design on this. So, so I don't cut myself, I'm going to re-angle this uh, hose clamp. And so we got a, I believe a 19, a 17, and I believe this one up here is going to be like a 14. Let's try a 14 real quick. <sighs> Let me get my, my thing longer over here so I can reach. Because it's still it's not easy to get at. 14. Alrighty. So I'll find the torque value for this. We'll put it in the video so you see the big ad B. Uh, hmm, excuse me, I'm about to uh, slip up there. You'll see me add the normal text that I uh, show for what I have to torque all these bolts to. I bust this one loose. Mm. Uh, bust its bottom one loose, hopefully. Let's go ahead. No, actually, the rear's not going to want to go down with stuff missing off of it. Ugh. So, this one down here was at 58 foot pounds. So, I got to eat. One has to eat their Wheaties to get this one off. It also helps to have a uh, adapter here, but. <sighs> See, I'm going to grab my Deepwell 19 real quick and get at that bad boy. Uh. 
Uh, all right, got you loose, and we're gonna take this one completely off to get at that uh, clevis bolt, a clevis nut. Now, whenever you do this, you do want to put something underneath the bike. So you've got something for your wheel to rest on. I used my 4x4 last time. I think I'm going to stack a little bit more of something underneath it. Always keep spare wood around. You don't know when it's going to come in handy. Alright. So this is only going to drop about an inch. Also, later on, whenever you put this back together, it's good to have it partially suspended because it's going to be a real pain to put everything back together if you're having to hold everything up the maximum distance. Alrighty, go ahead and get me a little tappity tap. And yeah, I know, I should have just waited until I got my springs in and everything to do all this at once, but... <sighs> I didn't know when I was going to receive this because of the COVID-19 issues and getting motorcycle parts lately. Quite honestly, it's been a real crapshoot if you're going to get anything within like a six week period. And why I recommend using like a full size drift or a long socket extension is they don't damage easily. And whenever you drop it, you still have something for the uh, bike linkage to push against. Alrighty, let's see, we've got nut washer. Set you guys aside. Pull you down and out of the way. What was that bottom bolt? 17? 17. Luckily I've done this recently enough that I have enough memory to... Oh, yeah, I'll get the extension on that. I have enough memory to... still be used to this configuration. <sighs> I still haven't tried out the new front suspension, but I figured I'd wait till I get both sets of boingers on. So if any of you guys are fans of the 80s, I remember the uh, Penguin Comet, I think it was Opus or whatnot, the Penguin with like the big, big beak or whatnot, they had a uh, comic series called Billy and the Boingers. It just reminded me of that. I was a huge fan of that when I was a kid. I thought it was hilarious. All right, let's grab that 14 and let's get the top off of here. So let's review our work so far. We have the dog bone off. We have the bottom clevis off. We're about to take this off. And now let's see if all these instructions are correct on uh, disassembly, which I assume these, uh, the manual's correct. It's smarter than I am. No, I totally did not follow it for the uh, <laughs> fork spring removal video. I just kind of went rogue on that. Ah, I thought I had my stand on something and it's just wiggling a little bit. Always be careful to fish these washers off because you don't want to lose them. Oh, wait. Oh, that's a full on frame spacer. All right. Got a nut. Now let's see if we can snake our hand in here and grab the other side of it. If yeah, that's the case, this is about to be the easiest, uh, easiest shock I've ever removed. Even on the WR400, I'd take the entire subframe and exhaust and every, all that rot off. 
No way. Oh, come on. Let me put my parts up first. I don't want to lose that. There's no way it can be this easy. Maybe it can. Doesn't seem like it though. Seems like I've got something interfering. Now the manual didn't say anything about having to remove the battery box or any of that rot. But so far we're being a little difficult here. This looks like that's the uh, bottom flapper AIS that's interfering with me pulling this bad boy out. Yeah, I didn't figure it would be that easy. <sighs> well, all right. Too big to pull out of the bottom. I'm gonna take this AIS off. Much to my chagrin. It doesn't specify to, but just because it doesn't specify to doesn't mean that you don't do it. And it should buy me the space I need to make this, make this dream work for the teamwork. Alrighty. I don't know how much flexibility I'm going to get with this because we have those metal uh, retaining lines for this. Well, maybe I'll get a bit. Oh, this is also part of the battery retention deal. See if that makes a difference. All it needs about half an inch. Oh, look at that. And we have successfully extracted our bottom boing, our spin it. Lefty loosing from the wrong side. Oh. Alright. Well, your, your boy here is a little dumb, apparently. Also, be careful when using the drift method that you don't mar the threads because then this becomes an impossible feat. You know, this is probably very boring to watch, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the part where I have the spring ready to come off. So after about another five minutes of whacking, you got, got it to the point where it would start to spin. And hopefully you buy enough uh, space on here to be able to take this bottom collar off. And the trick is we got to get that lock ring out of the way.
I don't think this will thread off anymore. Sometimes we'll thread completely off. Yeah, yeah apparently it does. Alright, that should be enough room to get this uh, collar off of here now, and if not, then I'll just keep on adjusting upwards. Come on, color. And you want to be careful not to mar up the uh, the shaft itself. So once you get this uh, collar off, gently pull the spring. And set that crap aside. Then put your shock bumper back down so you don't damage anything and be super careful not to nick any of this stuff in here. You nick that shaft and <sighs> you're looking at a world of hurt. Alright. And of course there's no instructions that come with all of these. I'm assuming it probably sets like this, so you have a bigger area for your shock to rest. So let's check this big old spring out. We're looking at a spring that's substantially thicker in girth. I'll kind of show you guys for example. The reason they give you those spacers is this won't rest on the adjustment collar. Also note that since it's going to be a bigger spring, this is also going to be harder to take out in the future. So we're just going to wing it. I'm going to assume this is how it goes together because I would figure that you need the part that uh, holds it in place and doesn't have an open end on the top. Now, assuming this bad boy here locks down the bottom as an extra collar, move our bumper, tie this through, push the bumper back up, it appears this all rests here and I think my educated guess is very educated. So we're going to make sure that our open ends of our uh, Spring deal here just for safety's sake or on opposite ends which it kind of just worked out that way and now we're just gonna spin our spin our collars back down and it's actually a shorter spring than the original one that came on here Ah, there we go. Just had to get it to thread right. So seven threads is probably not going to be enough preload on this thing. <sighs> Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Generally, a good rule of thumb is turn it to where you can't turn it by hand anymore 
Because, yeah, these two springs are vastly different in length. 14 threads would have it actually close to its original preload. <sighs> well, for height and length. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, well, toss a little bit more attack on Titan on this thing. Yeah, my bad. i back you out of the way. Top ring. Because we don't want to drift through both. Kind of a bummer this thing has a nick in the paint. Should be alright though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We're we'll gonna go with thirteen on preload. Yeah, I know I'm not setting the sag or anything on this thing, but. We'll worry about setting sag and all of that later. There we go. Got a spring. Got top. It's been knocked a little bit out of kilter. Not a big deal. Just twist it back. I'm gonna feed this guy through here again, if we can fit it back in. Yeah, it's a little tighter with this new spring. Not gonna lie. Come on, uh, emissions crap. I know you're already getting in the way of my horsepower, but could you get out of the way of my spring install? the rest of this up later put everything back together take a little spin around the neighborhood alrighty we are on the home stretch of this job so grab me some lubrication yeah that's a bolt for this one actually this one was greased up top that's surprising eh, a little more can't hurt I'm gonna try and feed this uh, shock back into place. So yeah, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit shocked. No pun intended. Actually, pun partially intended. I'm not gonna lie. I like puns. It's low comedy, but it's good stuff. Ugh, so I'm gonna feed this thing back in here. say that let me not uh you know mask my enthusiasm with a uh, undeserved hubris here I tell you what you are hard to wedge back in here all right Ooh. come on come on feller Even with the brilliant Yamaha design of having these bolts have one dead end to them, it's uh, still hard to get this stuff back in here. Oh. Let me grab a screwdriver so I can line this thing back up. Poke it the rest of the way in. So this top bolt here, or top nut, is going to be 29 foot-pounds. And then the other two are going to be as they are last time, 38 and 58 respectively. 
But before I fish all this stuff, back to the beginning. I'm going to put my, I'm guessing this is actually the servo for the stock exhaust back pressure thingamajigger. Okay, you are, you are hard to work with. Let's be a little agreeable here, guys. All right, well, I'll just start with one. But yeah, one thing that's unique about this bike is the stock exhaust has a like a servo for back pressure or something. Don't quote me on that. I'm not an engineer. I just play one on TV at Holiday Inn that I happened to stay at a few years back. But anywho, there's like this servo deal in here that supposedly increases the back pressure of the pipe and gives the bike more torque with stock exhaust. So one thing that people complain about on this Yamaha is that the thing lacks torque. There's no torque. Honestly, I've found this bike has plenty of torque, especially once you gear it properly for whatever you plan to use it for. Hmm, actually that went underneath that battery hook. There we go. But yeah, it creates kind of back pressure. So if you guys know anything about the science behind, and you should watch this on YouTube, I forget which person has, uh, has a video up explaining it. But whoever does have the video up, search it. Definitely watch their stuff. Because that big goofy looking pipe that you see on two strokes serves a purpose. It's actually there to create back pressure through uh, sound waves and air to give the bike more, more power. You know, what have you on it. Well, that's probably the reason I haven't gotten a new exhaust yet. I might get one of those Graves exhaust deals to have the uh, end of that, but that's just me being vain and wanting a blappier sounding bike. Yeah, I want my bike to make a blap noise. Blap, blap, blap. Uh, 29 foot pounds. I have a feeling I'm going to have to uh, recenter that clevis. It seems a little bit out of place. No biggie. Now the hardest thing to do to move the clevis over. And it really does shock me like how much shorter that uh, spring was for this uh, race tech replacement set. I don't mean to keep harping on that, I'm just really surprised that was that much shorter. Alright, get this one flat end down. A little easier to stab from the other side, but you know. I've actually kind of gotten to the point I can do this almost by feel. After you know I throw the uh, throw the washer across the floor. Ugh. Yeah, that's the secret to success on this, is throwing all of your parts across the floor. Alright. Now this one was 38 foot-pounds. Grab our 17 and our torquey wrench. Our torquey. Crank you up to 38 foot-pounds. The 
still surprised these torque values are so high on here. All right. And now for the dog bone, which we're probably going to have to lift the wheel a little bit to get this thing to fit through. This one's going to be a little harder to stab. But nowhere near as hard to do as my CRF or my RM125 was to do. Those were very difficult. This is like mildly annoying at worst. And I did have this thing checked for calibration after a torque bar. It is one and a quarter pounds heavy. Not like me, it's like 140 quarter pounds heavy. Quarter pounders to be exact. That's why we put these big old springs on here. Come on. Thank you down a little bit. I'm getting a little nervous. All right, back up to 59. All right, now turn this thing back down to 10 to let it idle. Cause you never want to leave your torque wrench cranked way up it screws up its calibration so I always take it down to 10 foot pounds otherwise known as zeroing zeroing out your torque wrench and the rest of this is number plates and seat back on and giving it a shot all right yep yeah, we're So I full on expect that I'm going to have to change some suspension settings to account for these new heavy duty springs. I mean I went from a uh, 0.46 kilogram in the front to a 0.50 and in the rear an 8.6 8 .8 to a 9.4. That's what Race Tech suggested for my weight and riding style and everything else. <laughs> so who am I to, to argue with? Uh, race tech engineers but we're gonna take this thing out for a little spin either later today or tomorrow and then Sunday we're gonna take this to the trails and I'm gonna maybe even hit the MX track if I feel particularly brave and or stupid sorry this is a bit longer of a video but you know how to is to teach you how to do to something well anyway if you like the content like and subscribe if you don't feel free to criticize me harshly I get off on that sort of stuff I also take payment in Attaboys. In the meantime, look forward to the next one. Have a good one.